Sam Logue here for irishboxing.com. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the victorious Gary Cully after a fifth round, Gary, fifth round knockout of Miguel Vasquez. Yeah, that sounds cool, doesn't it? Fifth round knockout. Um, Guys, did you expect... Come on, Kevin. Did you expect to get, not just to get Miguel Vasquez out of there on a stoppage, but did you expect to get him so early? I did expect to get him out of there. Um, the timing, yeah, the timing was a little bit earlier, and I thought that uh, I wasn't sure if he'd go down my headshots. I thought I might have to work the body a little bit more, push the pace going through the rounds, going through. After five, the plan was repeat. After five, start turning the screw. So after four, five, I said after the fourth round, I said to P, he's he's going downhill, and he said, yeah, start turning the screw now. And then once I start turning the screw, fifth round. Shock him and uh, yeah, night night. <laughs> night night. <laughs> Talk to me about that transition in the game plan. So at the start you were you were nice and bouncy, nice and fluid, looking to get your jab off, I think. And then talk to me about what the actual transition was. Uh, yeah, literally what, what was that transition? What was the difference? The plan was to be patient, um, because it's a ten round fight and obviously it was very possible that Miguel Vasquez could have brought me 10 rounds because uh, it, like he's so experienced, he's been around the world, been in with all these uh, these Canelos, Josh Taylors. Um, so yeah, he could have possibly brought me 10. So the plan was be patient earlier on, don't get greedy, you land a good shot, don't jump on him and try and finish it. Show a bit of maturity, show a bit of patience and uh, that's what I think that was. It was just a, a very mature performance in there. I hurt him a couple more times, his legs went and I kind of just stood up and said let let the knockout come um, and don't go chasing it so yeah um, in, ter- in terms of turning the screw what what does that translate to in layman's terms if you like so you know what I mean so what when you got him out of there what what was the actual difference in what you were doing to what you'd been doing before um, and that was started the fight in first gear probably went into second gear in the second round after I got my distance and I was maybe in third gear there when uh, when the knockout came in the fifth but they're still Four, five, six, seven, eight gears there. There's, there's, like, there's, there's a lot more than that. Um, the plan was, like I said, five rounds in, halfway through the fight, he's gonna start dipping, and then we'll turn the screw and we'll start putting it on him a bit more. And turning the screw in this fight was use your physicality, put the hands up, walk him down, and bully him. And that was the plan after five. But uh, it obviously didn't, it didn't get to, it didn't even get to do that yet. So yeah. You, t- you touched on it there, but how much do you still? How much did you not show in that fight as such? Um, were you only was were you only kind of scratching the surface of in terms of your ability what you could actually show in the ring there? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Nobody's seen. I, I said it in the build up to this one that you haven't seen me go through the gears yet, and possibly there you see me go through them a little bit more. Um, and probably seeing me using my brain a little bit more because he was awkward at the start. I had to get distance, I had to get time, and instead of just landing shots off the cuff straight away, being able to go in and land a big shot in the second round or the first round, I had to get my distance, work him out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that was. Um, I forgot what that question was called. What was the question? Um, the question was. The question was about how much of your ability did we really see in there tonight? Yeah, so like I said, that was probably third gear when I stopped him there and there's still four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. I've I've uh, I've a lot more in, in my arsenal to show, a lot more in my toolbox and uh, it's certain styles that certain styles of certain fighters bring out certain styles of me. So I had to use a certain style of Miguel Vasquez there. But like I said to you the other night in the interview, if he comes to fight I'll fight him. If he, if somebody comes to box, I'll outbox them. If they come to fight, I'll outfight them. I can I believe I can do it all and uh, yeah that that performance tonight was what I needed to do to get Miguel Vasquez, Vasquez out there, but I can adapt and I can adjust and whoever it may be coming next I, I'm able to adjust and, and use different skills to, to do the same to them. Does that performance tonight and Specifically, the the win that it is, the win that it is against a guy that nobody does that to, who's a kind of a, if you like a gatekeeper, but a very very high level gatekeeper. Uh, he's a kind of a gatekeeper for like world championship level almost. Um, does that prove that you're ready 
for the top guys in the division. The likes of, like we spoke about a few weeks ago, the Lopez's, Javante Davis, Cambosis, Lomachenko, even maybe Jorge Linares if we want to put him in there. Are you ready for these guys now? And what would you like next based on the performance you had tonight? I think so, yeah. I've but like I've thought so since uh, before I made my debut, you know what I mean? So <laughs> um my manager is kinda he's pulled me back and he's got the, the right fights at the right time, said, Look, they'll come when they come, be calm, be patient, learn your craft and he's he was right. Like I was calling for these very early days and probably I would have took a shot that I wasn't ready for, but now I'm building building nicely, progressing nicely and I believe I'm ready for Probably not far off them names. If not, if I'm not ready for them now, maybe one fight, two fights down the line. But um, yeah, probably need like another maybe Miguel Vasquez level type of guy. Um, I don't know any names off the top of my head. Is, Ma- is Maxi Hughes someone that you would like? IBO title? Yeah, of course, of course. Maxi Hughes has a fight um, next week, isn't it? The week after against Ryan Walsh. Weeks, so yeah. whoever comes out the winner of that, of course, I'd be interested in any of these names. Like, not because it's Maxi Hughes or because whatever, it's because it's an IBO world title and anyone who's going to progress me in the rankings or progress my career and, and get my na- name out there even more and, and give me titles, that's what I want. 100%. Um, it was a phenomenal performance and congratulations on the performance, Gary. What I will touch on quickly is the main event. I don't know how much of it you saw, but Michael Conlon was, uh, to most people, cruising to, uh, to a victory. Looked absolutely phenomenal tonight, career best performance, and seemingly you might be able to tell me more about what happened, but seemingly he just got caught out of nowhere in the twelfth round with a punch from the gods. He went through the ropes, and uh, we'll, what we will say is we hope that Michael's all right. Can you just uh, reflect on it for me? Yeah, that's exactly what I seen, man. Uh, I was front row for it, and Mick was. I have actually seen since that he was uh, up on all three judges' cards. Yeah. And to me, it was just about to, in my opinion as well, was just about to, to win the world title and um, make history for Ireland. And it was devastating to see, honestly, devastating to see. And I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm on a high from my own fight and I'm buzzing because I won, but I feel so bad for Mick. Um, and it took the shine, it took the shine off a great night because uh, the, the three, the three of us, myself, Kevin and Thomas, got things going for the Irish, and it would have been lovely for Mick to top it off for us and. Uh, like you said, he was 20 seconds away from becoming world champion, so it is devastating. I'm good for him, but um, for sure he's going to come again. Um, prayers with Mick tonight, and I hope he recovers over the next few days, and I'm sure he will be fine, please God. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him come again and become a world champion because he deserves it after tonight, especially. Definitely. Does he deserve a rematch, in your opinion, or does it is it based more on, you know, do we need to wait and see if he's okay or, or would you be kind of happy enough to say straight away no we should get a rematch or what's your opinion I think it deserves a rematch because of how good of a fight it was it was one of the best fight, probably the best fight I've ever seen live it was unbelievable from Lee Wood to be down like that in the first round I thought it was finished in the first round I literally yeah. looked and said this is over then to come back how he did recover how he did and both of them went into the trenches both of them went to war both of them dug deep and then for Lee Wood to finish it like that, congratulations to Lee Wood as well, by the way, for finishing it the way he did. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it was a sensational finish, in fairness. But um. Yeah. Look, I, th- I think it does warrant a rematch. Whether whether that happens or whether Lee Wood wants to go that route, that's another thing. But um, it was definitely one that I would like to see again, just because of how entertaining it was. Definitely, I echo that sentiment. I think he deserves the rematch, based on the fact that he was up on the cards. He was clearly winning the fight. And, uh, and and also that atmosphere. Talk to me a little bit about the the Irish, the atmosphere and the fans in there. Not just the Irish fans, they were amazing, but the Nottingham fans as well and just the general buzz in the arena. You got a good reception as well. Talk to me about it. Yeah, that was the best, uh, the best feeling in my career so far, walking out on that big stage, looking into that uh, 9,000 seater stadium. Obviously wasn't full, full when I was fighting, but... Uh, there was a good crowd there and the Irish made themselves heard and uh, the atmosphere was unbelievable and then for Mick for that main event was that was next level that was like something I've never seen before between the Nottingham, the not, not only the Irish fans the Nottingham crowd were unbelievable as well and I actually remember looking at Niall and saying Nottingham is a place that I'd love to fight in again because it's 
the atmosphere they created there tonight was unbelievable and uh, I think some cities are just special for that some cities can do it there's some cities that are let's say boxing cities or, or sports cities and they're, they're able to the fans are able to yeah. create special atmospheres Belfast obviously being one of them and uh, Nottingham here tonight was was electric as well so yeah con- fair play to uh, to everybody who came out and created that atmosphere 100% very last one for me Gary is you you definitely impressed did you have any words with Eddie Hearn afterwards and how far along do you think we are in the, the quest for a, a matchroom contract I have no idea man to be fair uh, I'm sure I'll have a couple of options after that performance tonight yeah, I'll, I'll probably, sit down yeah. with a couple of people and uh, yeah. map out what's next for me I did just uh, thank Eddie for the opportunity and he said yeah we'll have a chat but no, nothing of that yet um, I'm sure we will have a chat and uh, yeah. I'm sure there's going to be options on the table but whatever whatever way I go whatever route I go there's exciting fights ahead exciting nights ahead and uh, it's exciting times for me life is good at the minute it certainly is very exciting Gary Cully you're providing the Irish fans with a lot of excitement and the people who didn't know you before this fight they certainly know you now and you're going to have a massive following if you didn't already you're going to have a much bigger following after this Gary thank you very much for talking to irishbox.com it's been a pleasure and thanks for all of the interviews all week and all the attention I've really appreciated it myself personally Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. and appreciate all the fans back home tuning in to, to these interviews or giving giving any of us any sort of shares, follows, likes. It, it all goes a long way. And to you guys at Irishboxing.com giving us the platform as well. Thank you all. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Cheers, Pat.